Praise be Jesus and Mary. This Sunday in the first reading, we have taken from the book of Exodus, the story of how the Israelites were journeying through the desert and they were weak and tired and run down and hungry and thirsty because of the journey, because of the difficulties. And so, because of these difficulties, their faith in the God who freed them from Egypt by miraculous signs, the same God who very shortly before had them walk through the Red Sea on dry ground and had brought them into this land and was bringing them to the land of promise, this same God they begin to doubt and they lose faith. Why? Because of the difficulties. So this is the first point that all of us should learn from in the readings this weekend, is when life becomes difficult or God's providence, okay, in his wisdom, he sends us various trials not to grow weak in faith, but to remember the great things that God has done to remember the miraculous things that he has done throughout history, but perhaps even in our own lives. Okay, the special lights and graces and consolations we have received. Right, let's not be too attached to that or make our faith depend on that. But instead, whether God sends good or permits evil, we should always be firm in the faith. But instead, the Israelites, going the way of weak human nature, they begin to grumble and complain. And so they're thirsty for water, traveling through the desert. They have recourse to Moses. Moses appeals to God, and once again, he works another miracle by striking the rock and bringing forth water from the rock. Enough to satiate everyone's thirst and to satisfy everyone. And all of this, as St. Paul says, is a figure for the truth which is to come. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, St. Paul says, and the rock was Christ. And in fact, the rock being struck is an image of our Lord on the cross, struck in the side with the lance, and blood and water flowing forth. Okay, these are the living waters that our Lord has promised. The living water, which means grace or the Holy Spirit, divine life okay, in this world and then glory in the next. Okay, these waters of grace, the Holy Spirit, divine life and glory in the next world are the waters that satisfy us and bring peace to our hearts as we travel through the desert of this world. Right? This is what has been poured into our hearts at the moment of baptism. So we see our Lord in the gospel promising the woman at the well living water. Whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. You see, everybody born into this world is a thirsting soul, right? Has a heart that is not satisfied. We're all desiring fulfillment, right? This is evident everywhere you turn, okay? And everyone you meet, it is ingrained, in, uh, born into our nature, okay? This desire, and now some people are seeking to satisfy it in all of the wrong places in the desert of this world. They're trying to satisfy themselves with water that does not quench the thirst, that does not satisfy. And so our Lord has promised us, he has told us, whoever drinks the water I will give will never thirst. It is only God's grace, intimate union, with Almighty God that satisfies the desires of our hearts. Partially, 
in this world, completely in the next. And so the souls who live lives of firm faith and draw from the fount of this living water, also symbolic of the Eucharist, okay? the Eucharist which satisfies our spiritual hunger. Okay, the souls who live in this way and in intimate union with God, they can experience already in this world a foretaste of heaven that is to come. They can experience the peace that this world cannot give, that only comes from God. And so having drunk from this fountain of life, they do not desire anymore the things of this world. They have found what they have been looking for. And it will be fulfilled, completed, perfected in the life to come. This is what we have all received in baptism. In the second reading today says, The love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Right? Notice the, the verb there, poured out. Again, as liquid, as living water at the moment we receive baptism. And the grace, the divine life that we receive at the moment of baptism is meant to grow throughout our lives by corresponding with more grace, by practicing the virtues, by avoiding sin. All of this will become ever more satisfying. Right? So when we hear the messages of the world and uh, everybody teaching self-fulfillment and self-help. The, the Christian church, the Catholic church, has the answer in Jesus Christ, in the Holy Eucharist, in the sacraments, in intimate union with God, which is possible for everyone and desired by God for everyone. So for ourselves... Let's examine ourselves, examine where our desires are, especially during this time of Lent. Are we caught up in trying to satisfy our hearts in the things of this world, whether it be food or entertainment or traveling, vacations, and all of these things, which in and of themselves, of course, aren't bad, but we must not seek ultimately our satisfaction and contentment in them, but only in God. As St. Augustine says, our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.